I was curious with the uh, large number of people you ha now have with uh, tremendous amounts of wealth, what do you think of the current state of philanthropy? Well, I'll be out this week. Uh, actually, I'm going to Coca-Cola Main and I'm flying out to Seattle and, and, and talking to the United Way group out there. They, Seattle United Way raises more per capita, I believe, than any United Way in the country. And, and Bill Gates will be there. We're talking jointly. His mother was very active in United Way. But Bill uh, is going to give away over a billion dollars a year and a lot more later on, but right now a billion. And it's very interesting. I mean, he's very rational about it and he's very informed. In fact, he got somebody, I think his primary advisor in the medical field is a fellow who was with the CDC in, in Atlanta. And Bill reads 15 books a, a month on this. I mean, he, he, he can just absorb it. I, I wouldn't be able to get it that fast. But he just says with a billion dollars, he wants to save as many lives per year as he can. So how did, he just, that's his objective. He's, it's just as much a metric of his, of his foundation as some other metric return on capital might be for a business. And he says, I'm going to spend a billion dollars a year. How many? How many lives can be saved for that? So he's gotten very heavily into vaccines and, and uh, AIDS in Africa, a number of things. Uh, it's very rational. Uh, I personally uh, think I've, all of my 99 point something percent of my net worth will go to a foundation after the latter of my wife and I uh, die. I mean, it's all going to go to a foundation. As far as I'm concerned, I got it from society. It's going to go to society. I've written a letter to my trustees, and I've got very few trustees. If you've got a whole bunch of trustees, in my view, it, they just homogenize themselves down to sort of the lowest common denominator because you get 30 people in a room and uh, prestigious people, but they'll, they'll all have their particular alma mater and they'll all have their particular hospital and it'll become a big trade-off game, you know, it'll be a little like Congress. So uh, <laughs> I have very few people and I don't give them anything specific because I tell them their judgment above ground will be better than my instructions from six feet underground. So it, uh, I don't like to think that, but it's true. <laughs> so I tell them, look, the society are the ones that don't have a natural funding constituency you, uh, or are just damned intractable and very difficult to solve. So I tell them, I am not going to haunt them at all if they spend big money on some terribly important problem and they fail because they're taking on tough problems. When I buy businesses, I'm buying easy businesses. But the reason the big problems of society are big problems is that they're damn tough to solve. So they are, they're swinging at bad pitches. I'm swinging at easy pitches in business, but they're swinging at, they have to swing at bad pitches. But I tell them I want them to try and do it. And if they fail, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I tell them if they give a million bucks here and a million bucks there and a million bucks there, they're not going to sleep because I'm going to be haunting them. I'm going to come back every night. You know, I do not want the eyedropper approach used to philanthropy. Uh, but I want them to use their judgment to look at important problems that do not have a natural funding constituency. You know, if the government's going to fund it, fine. You know, I mean, they should be funding important problems, but we won't need to do it. The, the role of private philanthropy, in my, in my opinion, is to fund things that don't have the natural constituency. And that's what Bill's doing. There, isn't a, there aren't a bunch of people around that you can make an emotional appeal to, to make vaccines available to millions and millions of kids around the world. It just it doesn't tug at anybody's heartstrings. You can't name buildings after them. I mean, it just isn't the sort of thing that you can raise money for on an emotional basis. And there's nothing wrong with raising money on an emotional basis. But that is a problem that won't get solved by a funding constituent that's responding to that. But Bill is responding to what in his mind is, uh, is the important thing, which is saving lives. And he doesn't care whether he gets his name on a building or whether anything happens or whether anybody knows about it. I mean, he gets publicity just because of the scale he's on, on but it, he doesn't care about that. I can promise you that. So that's my philosophy is that I got this money not because I'm a superior human being, not because I've done more for society than other people. I was wired the right way to be dropped into the United States at this particular time. I mean, it's a huge capitalistic society and I'm wired, no credit to me, but I was born that way, so that I'm better at asset allocation than other people to some degree. Just like other people are better at all kinds of other things. And I was with two teachers out at Sun Valley <clears throat> that are doing more for society than I am. And they don't, this market system does nothing for them. Market system does all kinds of things for me. 
Gates says if I'd been born 5,000 years ago, you know, I'd have been some animal's lunch, you know, because I can't run very fast, and can't climb trees. I mean, you know, what those, the, and I could, I could tell that animal was chasing me, and I'll wait till you see how I can allocate assets, you know. But, <laughs> it wouldn't have made any difference. So here I am, you know. I'm born now, you know. I, the, just very, very lucky. And the, the odds when I was born in 1930, the odds were 50 to 1 against me being born in the United States. That's a terrible set of odds to face. And yet I was dropped down here, you know. And if I'd been dropped down in Peru or someplace or, or China, I mean, I wouldn't have had a chance. So society is what does it for you. And, and uh, it should go back, in my view, it should go back to society. If you've been lucky enough to be dropped into a society where your particular wiring pays off big, you know, it, it, uh, that's just luck. And, and uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with being lucky. I don't feel guilty about it or anything else, but I also don't feel that, I feel I have a lot of fun doing what I do, but I feel the money should go back into society and it should go back as intelligently as it can. And the best way to do it intelligently is to have high grade and intelligent people administering it uh, at the time. And you don't know the problems that are going to be out there 10 years from now or 20 years from now or 30 years from now. But I do know if I've got a small number of high-grade, smart people, and high-grade is more important. I'll, I'll, uh, if you gave me 20 extra points of IQ but, but cheated a little on the high-grade, I wouldn't take it because they've they got to be, they, they gotta be, there's so many chances to, to do things in a petty way or, you know, to try to, I mean, people get subverted in their own minds to their own interests rather than the interests of the institution. So I really want super high grade people doing it. And I've got them. And I think the money might do a lot of good, it may do no good, but it'll be operating in fields where if it does some good, that good probably wouldn't have been done otherwise. 